I'm Dan Garrison, software engineer at iRacing. Since the beginning of Papyrus and, and through iRacing, the track has been unchanging through a session. Whatever you have at the beginning is what you have for the duration of the session and the end. The, the, the track doesn't change. What we want to do is be able to have the track respond to what's going on, um, to have cars interact with the track, to have the track change in temperature, in the amount of rubber. Uh, we want marbles and we want those to be generated by the cars, putting them where they should be and picking them up and re-throwing them off the race line. It's a physical-based model that we focus on first and foremost, um, the tire and the track interaction, what's really going on there. It would be easy to just quickly throw something together. Our standards are it needs to make sense. What's really going on even at the molecular level between the track and the tire. The way the track works essentially is we divide it up into small cells that your car interacts with. So if you're adding temperature to a certain part of the track, we can pretty accurately know exactly where that is. That gets transmitted to the server. So if I'm in a race, my data is going to the server with everybody else in the session. The server accumulates that and basically broadcasts a consistent track state to everyone. So everyone's got the same track that they're racing on. One of the big challenges was being able to implement this dynamic track with any number of clients connected and, and have it just work as you would expect. Have it be the same for everyone in the service who is in a session. So to kind of give a little bit of a preview of the uh, state of things right now, I basically have run a number of laps at Five Flags with the effects exaggerated for demonstration purposes so that we can kind of immediately see what's going on with the track. Right here is basically the track at the beginning of the session. Um, there is a little bit of rubber on there that's put programmatically, that's the starting state of this track and it's fairly low rubber at this point. If we skip ahead to the end, yeah, I did about 30 laps, so at the very end you can kind of see all this darkened in right here. This is where I was running the car, so well, there you go. And again, this is exaggerated. A single car in 30 laps is not gonna darken the track anywhere near this level. We also have the ability to see the temperature, similar to an IR camera. At the beginning of the session, it's a little bit warm down here. It's very cool up here. As we skip ahead, all of a sudden this part of the track has become very warm. This is where I was running the car. And we can also drag the little thumbnail and see the effect of time as the track cools off and returns back to its equilibrium state. Before we had fairly symmetrical tracks, now because the sun is shining at some angle, one side of the track might be particularly hot and 180 degrees around the track is gonna be significantly cooler because the sun isn't really pointing at that. So you're on a track where maybe you basically treated it as two equal halves now you need to adjust to that. With multiple cars, over a long race, you're gonna have to seek out where's the grip, where is it going, how is the track changing. It's gonna require a much more intelligent approach to racing. You're gonna have to be able to handle the track through the life of the race. So in addition to temperature and rubber, we're also spending a lot of time working with marbles, putting them on the track where they should be. Later in a race, you can expect there to be marbles offline, and so a, a pass might be a little more sketchy later in the race because you're going to have to go through uh, part of the track that has accumulated some rubber. On the oval side, if you want to venture out into, say, the outside line and nobody's been there yet, you can expect to find marbles there. I expect that the track becoming dynamic means that during a race, temperature is going to go up significantly and the grip is going to respond negatively. You will want to be anticipating that, seeking out cooler parts of the track, taking a slightly higher line for a while, testing out, is it faster up here? I fully expect it's going to break up the field. Cars are going to be trying new things. You won't be able to just take a qualifying setup and make a tiny change and then be able to run the same laps over and over. It's going to just become a much more dynamic and unpredictable experience.
As significant as this first implementation is in, in creating a dynamic environment, it's really kind of just sets the foundation for even bigger and better things. We will be able to handle day-night transitions and a moving sun and clouds coming in and have the track respond to that. We can look down the road and say, well, we'll want to do rain and have water on the track and have it move and have it dry according to where the tires are and how much temperature is there and how much is the sun shining. All these things that happen in a real race, we want to model them and we are well on our way in being able to do something like that. I think it's great as, a, as, a, as an iRacing member to see this feature come to fruition. This dynamic track is something that really has been kind of discussed for a long time and to join the team and be able to bring it to the members, myself being one of them, is very exciting. It's going to change the face of race sessions significantly and really improve the experience.